Hello everyone, let us discuss about congenital talipes equinovirus. So it is one of the most important topic in orthopedic. So congenital talipes equinovirus is also known as claw foot. Okay, for understanding this, we have to first learn about the joints of the foot, the bones and the ligaments present in the foot. So, so the joints present in the foot are ankle joint, which is formed by the talus and the tibia, subtalar joint, which is formed between the talus and the calcaneum and the talonavicular joint form between the talus and the navicular bone and last one is the calcinocubal joint so what are the bones present in the uh, foot let us revise it the, uh, the bones are the talus calcaneus cuboid navicular medial lateral and intermediate cuneiform then we have metatarsals and tarsals okay so um, the hind foot consists of talocalcaneal and calcinocuboidal joint so you can see in this figure here the hind foot consists of talocalcaneal and calcinocuboid joint so this one is the hind foot then midfoot is formed by the talonavicular talonavicular and naviculo naviculo cuneiform joint uh, this one this part is the middle foot and of course on the cuneiform metatarsal and other joint other inter uh, phalangeal joints are the forefoot okay so and talking about the ligaments of the uh, foot we have deltoid ligament which is the medial collateral ligament of the foot we can see here this one's the deltoid ligament then we have spring ligament which connects um, calcaneum to the naviculum then we have interosseous ligament which connects talus to the calcaneum then we have capsular ligament uh, which consists of the capsule of the talonavicular naviculo cuneiform and cuneiform to metatarsal joint and we have plantar which extend from the plantar surface of the calcaneum to the foot then after this we have to learn about some terms which are necessary to understand the whole meaning of this deformity which is first one is equinus okay so what is equinus equinus is foot fixed in plantar flexion so we know when um, we can uh, understand by this error di diagram when our foot moves up this one is the dorsiflexion and this one is the plantar flexion okay so when the foot is flexed in the plantar flexion that is uh, downwards so it is known as equinus okay then after that we can understand we need to understand about the virus in which the foot is inverted and adducted at the mid tarsal joint so that the sole faces inward so my way of learning the virus and the valgus deformity is by this simple figure so the virus deformity is like this and the valgus deformity is like this so we can see here if we on if we consider this as a joint so uh, the uh, joint is everted, everted and abducted. So, uh, and adducted here. So, okay. So, uh, the, then uh, another term is cables. There is longitudinal arc exaggeration. Okay. So, talking about the deformities in the uh, congenital talipes equinovirus first we have to know what are the deformities present in our different parts of the foot so at the forefoot we have adduction plus supination okay then at the midfoot we have cavus and at the hind foot we have varus and at the ankle joint or the heel we have equinus so let's go to some clinical picture so examining from the middle plantar side we can see equinus at the angle ankle posterior crease at the ankle joint deep crease on the midfoot the medial border of the foot is concave we can see here and the forefoot is adducted and inverted so then examination from lateral side we can see the convex lateral border similarly adducted and inverted forefoot and there is apparent shortening of the thumb sorry of the toe and there is prominent body of the talus and after that uh, when examining from the posterior aspect we have tight cord like tendino achilles here small tucked up heel and posterior crease at the ankle now let's go to the etiology what causes congenital talipes equinovirus so first one is idiopathic and second one is secondary so in idiopathic we have three theories mechanical theory ischemic theory and genetic theory in mechanical theory it is considered that when there is increased in the intrauterine pressure the 
it presses the foot against the wall of the uterus that leads to the deformity. Then in ischemic theory, we have ischemia of the calf muscle during intrauterine life. Then genetic theory says that there is some genetically related disturbance in the development of the foot. Then we have secondary. In this, we have paralytic disorders in which there is muscle imbalance between the inverter and plantar flexion which are more stronger than the everters and the dorsiflexion. So, our foot is fixed in the inver inverted and plantar flexion. After that, another theory is artho arthogyropsis multiplex congenita. So, artho means joint, gyropsis means contractures, multiplex means at multiple sites and congenita means from by birth. And there is defective development of the muscles which becomes fibrotic leading to this deformity. Other theories include TVL deficiency, constriction rings, and syndromic, which is trisomy 21. So, talking about the pathoanatomy now, if we go to the bone, we have foot bones which are smaller than the normal. The neck of the talus is angulated, and head of the talus faces downward and medially. Downward and medially. So, the calcaneum is small and concave medially. Okay, the calcaneum is small and concave medially. Then going to the joints, we have already um, talked about this. There is equinus at the ankle joint, inversion at the subtalar joint. The four feet foot is fixed in adduction and supination, and there is cavus in the midfoot. Not forefoot, midfoot. Then going to the pathoanatomy of the muscles and the tendons. At first, the muscles of the calf are underdeveloped. Uh, the muscles basically the tibialis anterior and the posterior. Okay, and Posteriorly, the tendino Achilles, similarly medially, the tibialis posterior, flexor hallucis longus and flexor digitorium longus are contracted. Going to the capsule and ligaments, we have seen about the ligaments. All the ligaments are certain and they are posteriorly the posterior capsule of the angle, ankle joint, posterior capsule of subtalar joint, posterior talofibular and calcinofibular ligament, medially talinonavicular ligament, spring ligament and the deltoid ligament all are certain. And uh, plantar fascia and ligament okay so going to the skin there is adaptive shortening on the medial side of the sole okay so the medial side of the sole as it is contracted so there is adaptive shortening of on the medial side similarly there is deep crease on the medial side as we have seen in the picture before so there is dimple present on the lateral aspect of the ankle and the midfoot so going on to the clinical feature features on symptoms as we have already seen in the figures before so I'm not going to talk about it again. So going to the sign, we have dorsiflexion test. In dorsiflexion test, the foot cannot be dorsiflexed or touched um, to the scene of the tibia, which can be done in the normal child. But in the child with this deformity, the foot cannot be dorsiflexed. Second one, we have plumb line test, in which the child is made to sit on the table with his both lower limbs hanging freely. Okay, then a line is drawn from the patella to the uh, tibial tubercle which and in normal foot uh, it cuts the foot at first and second intermetatarsal space but in case of this deformity the, it cuts into the fourth and fifth intermetatarsal space okay after that we have scratch test uh, in, will, in which medial scratch test for the peroneals and lateral scratch scratch test for the inverters in more classic form the there is bilateral foot deformity in 60 percent and skin creases is present on the back of the heel and the head of the talus is prominent going to the radiograph the ap view uh, first a kite's angle is evaluated uh, which is a talocalcaneal angle which is less than 20 degree seen in the club foot similarly the talocalcaneal is less than 35 degree um, in which normal should be more than 45 degree in lateral view